Well, I'm feeling quite peaceful. I um, just got back from holidays and um, it was actually quite nice. At Burley Beach. Okay, this is going to cooperate. There we go. It's actually quite nice, Burley Beach. Anybody, anybody else like Burley Beach? Do you want me to tell you a little bit about my holiday? So um, I'm a little bit of an early riser. Uh, at usually about 4 a.m. I'm awake. And um, don't hate me, I love the mornings love the mornings. Gabe loves the mornings too. It's just he's going to bed generally when I'm getting up. But I'm um, sorry, Gabe, I couldn't resist. A couple of mornings I w- got up and looked at my Instagram and you were still up. So, um, And I would go out and the coffee shop at Burley opens, the little one in the hole in the wall, opens at like five. And so I would be there ready with about 15 other people because people get up ridiculously early on the coast. And I'd grab a coffee and I'd walk up Burley Hill and I'd sit and I'd watch the waves and the surfers and the, the endless parade of unusual people that, and their dogs that were out that early in the morning. And I've got to say, it felt really good. I felt like I could conquer the world. I felt like in that moment that there was just nothing in the world that could you know, be bad. Until the day I got up and it was raining. And I didn't feel so good because I couldn't do my little routine walk thing and the sea looked a little bit like ick. You know, and like it's nice when it's blue and it's beautiful and the waves are beautiful, but we had a storm. It was kind of yuck, grey and icky and the sky was icky. And, and somehow I didn't feel as good that day. Isn't that funny? How... We are so attuned is one word, but controlled is maybe another, by our feelings. We live actually in a world where feelings reign supreme. Now, I'm a little bit older than most of you in the room. I'm probably almost the oldest. Is Bevan here? Maybe he's older than me. Are you older than me, Bevan? I hope so. Anyway, but in my, um, that's really unusual to have someone older than me in the room. It's really nice. Um, When I was growing up, If I got up and said to my mother, I don't want to go to school today, and she said, why? And I said, because I don't feel like it. I don't feel like that would have been a very good thing to say. I feel like she would have said, so, let's get dressed. But we live in this world where feelings are just supreme. You know, how I feel about myself. We talk about that a lot how I feel about myself, how I feel about the world I live in. How do I feel about it? You know, and and how I feel about it determines how I engage in it, like it did on my holiday. How I feel about it determines how engaged I was in life in the moment and how I live. So how I feel is very important, right? It's not a trick question. How you feel is very important, right? I promise I'm not going to trick you, okay? You can answer with confidence. There are no wrong answers. So if you were to ask me on Thursday when I got back from the coast how I felt, I would have said, I feel 10 foot tall and bulletproof. That's how I feel. I feel like you throw anything at me and I'm just, I feel, I just feel great, you know? Now, have you ever felt like that? Have you ever, ever woken up? and thought, it's going to be a good day, right? And then you go out to your car and you're out of gas. Or you've got a flat tyre. Or some bird that all of a sudden decided to dwell on the, the, like, what is that, electricity line above your car decided to empty its bowel and bladder after having saved up for three weeks on right on your driver's side. And then all of a sudden how you feel feel about the day is slightly different, right? I want to talk about feelings tonight because, you know, I got back from holidays and I felt 10 foot tall and bulletproof. But by maybe Saturday, I probably, you know, um, I probably didn't feel quite as tall. And I felt like my ability to repel bullets was maybe starting to wane because I'd re-entered normal life. And we all know the facts. I'm not quite 10 foot tall. If I was double my height, I would be 10 foot tall. Um, 
And I'm not sure that I want to test out the bulletproof part at this point in my life. But feelings can be a little bit like that, can't they? Emotions, they're kind of changeable. They're just changeable. They're fleeting. Sometimes they're not a very accurate representation of the facts. And that doesn't mean that we should ignore our feelings. I think our feelings are important because they are part of us and they're very real. And without them, we'd kind of just be robotic, clinical, lacking in compassion, unable to express happiness, sadness, or fear. So I'm kind of happy that I have feelings because they're really the heart of who we are. So the fact is, I'm actually quite relaxed after my time off, regardless of how I feel, because I've just had 10 days of the coast. I didn't actually get, my husband got to throw axes. I don't know if you saw that on my Insta. I didn't get to throw axes because I was worried I'd actually throw my shoulder out. So he actually got to like live out his dream of like, you know, I'm a lumberjack and I'm okay. And, um, but you know, I feel, I feel really good. But the fact is that could change. The fact is I'm relaxed, but the way I feel about how that is can change. So feelings are important, but they were never meant to be what we base every element of our life on. That's when we get into trouble, okay? They need to be tied to the fact or the truth for balance. So we live in a world where feelings are mistaken for fact in some cases, and in some cases, they even replace fact. Because I feel it, therefore it is so. Well, what if you don't feel it in five minutes' time? Does that mean it's not so now, but it was so a minute ago? Like, they just replace fact in some cases. And honestly, I look at it and I think sometimes feelings are even overriding science in a lot of forums in the way we've never seen before. So feelings are like, you know, yes, we have to have feelings, but again, we have to tie them to fact because otherwise it becomes, I feel this way, so therefore that's how it is. Well, what if I'm sitting beside Kai and I just have this feeling that I just want to punch him in the face? I mean, I would never do that to Kai because he's far too sweet. But what if I just have this feeling and because it's how I feel, should I not then be allowed to do that? Because how I feel and how I feel is important. I mean, Kai might not feel that me punching him in the face is a really good thing to happen. But if I feel that, that that's what I should do, then, you know, maybe that's what I should do. I'm not going to do that. Because I don't ascribe to that belief. I don't believe just because I feel it, that's how it is. But to truly read the situation, we've got to go further than just our feelings. We've got to look at the facts. So the facts are, if I punch Kai in the face, sorry, Kai, <laughs> He could, it is well within his rights to call the police and they could put me in jail. That's just the fact. It's called assault. That's the fact. So I have to tie my feeling of punching Kai in the face, sorry Kai, <laughs> with the fact that if I act on that feeling, I could be in big trouble. I can see the paper now. Pastor of New Hope Church in jail for punching young man in the face during her message. Okay, so... I might get up one day and feel so good. I don't know if you felt like this. Maybe I'm just weird. Um, I was talking to my husband. We were walking along Burley Hill, around Burley Hill. And some of Burley Hill, I, I would feel really good if Burley Hill had like little railings all the way around. But there are points where there are no railings. And I had this discussion here that I was strange. But anyway, I was walking because, you know, we walk on the left as Australians. We walk on the left and I'm walking around and people are walking towards me and I'm like, what if that person feels like pushing me off the edge? What if they feel like that? I'm in big trouble. Like, but then on the other hand, I'd look and I'd think, would it not be the best feeling to be able to leap off? I feel so good. I could fly. Right? Have you ever thought about that? Am I just odd? Have you ever thought about how cool would it be to fly? Like I'm up here and it would just feel so cool to launch off. And I mean, birds seem to be able to do it, right? Um, so if I feel like I can fly, 
Should I not give it a go? Well, no. Why? Because there's things like gravity to consider, physics to consider, the fact to consider that no matter how much I feel like I can fly, I can't fly. And if I was to launch off the side of Burley Hill, I would drop like a stone and that would not be pretty. So I would do well to consider the facts before I just carried, get carried away with my feelings, right? Let me give you an example from a situation in Scripture. It's in Numbers 13. And it's where Moses sends the spies into Canaan. So the land of Canaan has been promised to the Israelites. And so I'm going to read it so you get the whole thing. And it's a little bit of reading. Are you okay? Okay, I'll try and make it interesting. The Lord said to Moses, send some men to explore the land of Canaan, which I'm giving to the Israelites. That's the key. He's giving it to them. From each ancestral tribe, send one of its leaders. Okay, so the important things to note here. He's giving them this land. It's a given, right? He's not sending the kids. He's sending a leader. So what do we think of when we think of a leader? Someone who is mature, who can think, who can process, who can lead people. See what the land is like and whether the people who live there are strong or weak, few or many. What kind of land do they live in? Is it good or bad? What kind of towns do they live in? Are they walled, unwalled or fortified? How is the soil? Is it fertile or poor? Are there trees in it or not? Do your best to bring back some of the fruit of the land it was the season for the first ripe grapes. And so they went up and explored the land. When they reached the valley of, I'm not saying that word, they cut off a branch bearing a cluster of single grapes. And two of them carried it on a pole between them, along with some pomegranates and figs. And at the end of 40 days, they returned from all the exploring of the land. And they came back to Moses and Aaron and the whole Israelite community at Kadesh in the desert of Paran. And they, they reported to them, and to the whole assembly and showed them the fruit of the land. Remember the fruit of the land they bought in on a pole between two of them because the grapes were so big, they needed people to have a pole and carry them and put them in their pocket. And they gave Moses this account. We went into the land which you sent us and it does flow with milk and honey and here is the fruit. But the people who live there are powerful and the cities are fortified and very large. And we even saw the descendants of Anak there. Well, Anak, the descendants of Anak were giants. And then Caleb silenced the people before Moses and he said, we should go up and take possession of the land for we can certainly do it. But the men who had gone with him said, we can't attack those people. They are stronger than we are. And they spread among the Israelites a bad report. They felt bad, right? They spread a bad report about the land they had explored. And they said, the land we explored devours those living in it. Come on, that's a little bit of a stretch. And all the people we saw there are of great size. This is the key. We seemed like, we felt like grasshoppers in our own eyes and we looked the same to them. We felt like grasshoppers. We felt small. We felt inadequate. We felt weak. And therefore, that's how they saw us. So let's look at the facts. I have no idea what the time is, so I'm just going to keep... Do we have... No, okay. Okay, we're just going to keep going. Um, Let's look at the facts. This land was promised to the Israelites by God, right? It was promised to them. Moses sent out 12 men, all of them leaders in their tribe. Their mandate, they chose to accept it, to see what the land is like and whether the people who live there are strong or weak. Few or many, what kind of land, blah, 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 blah. And that's what they were sent to do. They were sent to spy out the land. They returned bearing a single cluster of grapes with two of them carrying it on a pole between them. Their report was they went into the land which they were sent to and it does flow with milk and honey and here's the fruit, but the people who live there are powerful and the cities are fortified and very large. And we even saw the descendants of Annex, the giants there. All fact. That's all fact, right? Then we move to the feelings. Caleb says, 
We should go up and take possession of the land for we can certainly do it. Ten out of the 12 disagree. We can't attack those people. They are stronger than we are. The land we, ex we explored devours those living in it. All the people we saw there are of great size. And the bottom line is we seem like grasshoppers in our own eyes and we look like it to them. We feel like, despite the facts, we feel like we can't do it. Our perception is so important because our perception becomes our reality. It does. That's why it's so important to tie your feelings to the facts or the truth. They felt like grasshoppers in their own eyes. They felt small and helpless and insignificant. And they misunderstood the assignment. The assignment was never about how they felt. It was never about how they felt. It was about information gathering and strategic planning. The land was already theirs. God had already given it to them. So they were going in to strategically see how they were going to take this land. It was never about feelings. They misunderstood the assignment. The truth was this land had been promised to them by the creator of the universe. It was already theirs. That was a fact. But their feelings didn't align up with the truth and it held them. This is really important. Their feelings didn't align with the truth and it held them out of their future and had them wandering in the wilderness for 40 years. When your feelings don't line up with the truth, with the facts, it can hold you out of where you're supposed to go. It can hold you out of your purpose. It can hold you out of your destiny. It can hold you out of moving forward. So if we don't align our feelings with the truth, we can hold ourselves out of our futures. It can keep you captive and it can make us feel lost. I want to give you just a quick personal example. So I have, in many years of my life, I've struggled with rejection and feeling alone. And I know where it comes from. It comes from the fact that as a, as a, as a baby, I was um, given up for adoption and it just planted something in my heart about being abandoned, about being overlooked, about being rejected. And it made me feel alone. And I spent many years as a younger woman where the feelings were so acute that if I walked into a room and people were talking or laughing together and they stopped, I would immediately think they were talking or laughing about me. So I was so held captive by the way I felt that I could not see the fact. The fact was, who knows what they were talking about? They certainly probably weren't talking about me. I spent many years standing outside of doorways trying to find the confidence to go into the room that I was entering into, whatever it was, whether it was a meeting, whether it was a social event, whether it was because I felt like I wouldn't be accepted. Now the truth is, that was garbage. The truth is I let my feelings overwhelm my ability to look at the facts and it held me captive for a very very long time because the fact is I'm not alone I'm never alone one I have Jesus two I have an amazing husband family this entire church community and many many friends and that's the fact but you can ignore the facts when the feelings overwhelm you the fact is when I found out later that my birth mother was 16 years old and had no choice but to put me up for adoption, that she was actually doing what she thought was best for me, not rejecting me. They're the facts. But when the feelings overwhelm you, you can't see the facts. And the problem with that is if you don't tie it to the facts, then you just become tossed along by every wind of feeling that comes along. So there was a clear conflict between the way I felt and the facts. So here's what I do when that happens to me. I don't push it down and try to ignore it. Because when you try and push it down and try and ignore it, 
it just pops up somewhere else like a weird kind of a jack-in-a-box. And it's generally not in a time that's convenient or conducive to dealing with it. I actually sit with the feeling, as uncomfortable as it is, and I allow myself to feel it. I try to examine why I'm feeling it. And then I try and tie it to the facts that I know to be true. And this one was easy to explain, but just because it's easy to explain doesn't mean it's less real, right? I found once I'd taken the time to think about it and compare it to the actual facts of the situation, I was okay and the feeling actually passed as feelings do. Sometimes you just need to get out an outside perspective from someone you trust. Sometimes you just need to say to people, hey, I'm, just, I'm feeling this way. Is what I'm feeling correct, justified, or am I just overreacting? Did I eat too much pizza last night? Do I just need to have sleep? Like all of those things factor in. So I'm just going to quickly, as we finish, I'm going to quickly give you a few ways to align your feelings with the truth. Because I'm intensely practical. How do you align your feelings? So this is how I feel. So how do I align that with the truth? First one is this. You've got to understand that just because it's how you feel doesn't mean it's fact. Just because it's how you feel doesn't mean it's fact. Proverbs 2.23 tells us that we are to guard our hearts with due diligence for out of it flows the issues of life. You've got to guard your heart. You know, sometimes you can feel offended. You can feel disappointed. You can feel hurt. You've got to guard that in your heart and deal with it rather than just run away with it and react and respond in a way that is not going to be helpful. Guard your heart. Understand that just because it's how I feel doesn't mean it's fact. Don't be afraid to sit with your feelings. We don't like it. It's not comfortable, is it, to sit? You know, some of you before when we had that moment where we sort of sat, some of you felt a little bit uncomfortable because it's like quiet and... If you can fill the air with noise, then it's not quite as uncomfortable. But sometimes you just need to sit with how you feel. Matthew 14, um, John, John the Baptist is beheaded by Herod. And John the Baptist is, is very close to Jesus. And the disciples bring the news to Jesus. And in Matthew 14, 30, and this is his response. When Jesus heard what had happened, he withdrew by boat privately to a solitary place. So instead of just reacting, he went and sat with how he felt. Went and sat with how he felt. You have to ask yourself, what are the facts and what is the truth? Scripture tells us that wisdom is available to us. You know, I, it often makes me laugh, you know, we kind of think, I want wisdom, I want wisdom, I want wisdom. You know, I want wisdom in this Jesus. And I've always found, Scripture tells us that wisdom is crying out to us. It's like yelling out to us from the street corners. The issue is we don't want to listen. So we have to be able to ask yourself, what are the facts? Like, am I overreacting to this? What are the facts? Is this just how I feel? Is, is it something, is this smallness that I feel, is it within me? Sometimes we just need to ask for wisdom. And sometimes when you're in a hurry to process something or get through something, you can miss wisdom because you hurry right past it. That's why sitting with it is so good. Another good thing to do is consult someone you trust for a perspective check. You know, I did this. I'm not telling you things that I don't actually do myself. I actually did this a couple of weeks ago. I felt like, I felt like I was upset about something. I felt like something was really pressing on me and I felt quite justified in being upset. But I just had this moment and I thought, I need to check this with someone. I felt like this for a long way, a long time, and I need to go find someone that I can talk to and say, and that in this, you have to be the big enough person to go, I could be wrong. So I contacted this friend and I said, I just need your perspective on this. I feel very hurt. 
And so I want to talk to you about whether my perspective and the way I feel is right, or whether I'm just simply offended and upset at people. Just need a holiday or a sleep or something. And they were able to very wisely and very gently talk to me about how I felt. We talked about all the circumstances. They were able to assure me of how I was feeling and also give me some wisdom moving forward. Otherwise, I just would have been stuck with how I feel. And the thing that we so often overlook is we need to pray. Jesus gives us this example many times. Luke 22, 39 to 44 is the account where Jesus, just hours before He's arrested, He withdrew to the Mount of Olives to pray through His feelings and align His actions with the truth. You know, we can look at Jesus sometimes in those moments and think, well, it was Jesus, right? But remember, He was 100% human. So I'm not sure how He was feeling about the fact that He knew any moment He was going to be arrested and crucified because He did know. And so He took time to pray. You know, He says, Father, if, if it be, let this cup pass from me. But if this is Your will, Your will be done. He took the time to process what He was feeling and align it with the facts and pray and get his heart right. Is that helpful? Is that helpful? Two of you are helped by that. That's awesome. <laughs> Feelings are important. I'm not saying they're not important. They're an essential part of who we are. But to be effective, they need to be tied or aligned with the truth. And I wonder today, as we sit here, I wonder if you can identify any areas in your life where your feelings are running ahead of the truth. I wonder if you can identify any area in your life where you're actually being confined by your feelings because you refuse to, to look at it and think, is this actually valid? And I just encourage you, we're going to pray most certainly. But I just encourage you, if that's you, if you feel in this moment, if you felt in this week, if you feel going into next week, that you're being overwhelmed by your feelings. Can I just encourage you? Practice what I just said. Sit with it. Pray. Talk to someone. Find the facts. Understand that just because it's how you feel doesn't make it a fact. Because I feel like in this moment, Jesus would say to you, He doesn't want anything to stand between what He is destined and purposed for your life and where you are right now. So I wonder if we could stand together. And I'd really like to pray for you. Lord, I just thank You tonight. I thank You that You made us emotional beings, that You gave us feelings, that we are able to feel happy and sad, that we are able to feel compassion and joy, that we are able to feel, to, to feel fear and triumph, that we are able to feel good and bad, that we are able to experience life in all its fullness. So we thank You for that, Lord. But we also thank You, Lord, for Your truth. We thank You for Your Word. We thank You that each and every one of us here has a purpose and a destiny and a life to walk out. We thank You, Lord, that You are good and You only do good. And we are so grateful for that tonight. So, Lord, we stand here tonight with our feelings. And, Lord, I pray for anyone here that feels overwhelmed right now. I pray, Lord, that Your peace would just guard their heart. I pray, Lord, as they leave tonight, that You would begin to do that work in their heart that, that really causes them to align what they're feeling with the truth of the situation, that You would enable us to just really find that balance, and that we wouldn't be held out of what You have for us. And Lord, I, just, I pray for wisdom. I pray for people who are navigating, you know, difficult situations, difficult feelings. Maybe it's grief, maybe it's hurt. Lord, I pray for Your wisdom for the people that are navigating those circumstances tonight. Because I know, Lord, that you want to do good 
that you want to bring good, that you want to bring people through, just like you brought the Israelites through. You want to bring them through into what you've promised them. In Jesus' name, amen.